anyway. Uh, 400, Randolph Ross runs 44.62, point one away from the American record. He went for it, man. He did, looking at his splits, he went out in 21.09, closed in 23.53. Now, when you think about it, 21.09, it's, that's pretty good. But when he ran in Clemson four weeks prior, when he ran 44.8, he went out in 20.9. So he basically went out a little bit too slow, basically left 0.2 seconds on, on the floor through the first 200, and then he wasn't able to make it up in the final 200, and he runs 44.62, which is still an incredible time. I talked to him after the race. He said if this was an outdoor track, he probably would have ran 43 low. And I believe him because that track is not fast, especially it's not one of those fast bank tracks. It, it may be good for a 60 because whatever, it's a 60 is just flat. You can figure that out. But for a bank track, it's not that quick of a track. And 44.62 will translate to some quick outdoors. And I think he's going to do well outdoors. I think he is going to be – He'll run 43 probably at least twice before – I think he's going to 43 seconds twice before the U.S. final. I'm going to go with that. He's going to run 43 seconds twice before the U.S. final. That 400 was interesting. Three Florida guys made the final. Three Iowa guys made the final. But the Florida 4x4 finished seventh. And the Iowa 4x4 finished 12th. That's crazy. You qualify three individuals from your school into the final. So you have three of the top eight guys in the country. But when you put together your 4x4, you finish 7th and 12th. And I think a big reason why that happened was because um, they're tired. That was the story to me. I talked about how bowling, he was tired from doing all the events. People, this, the meat is so condensed that to do multiple events in the same day, it is very, very hard. You saw with these 400 guys who they all qualify for the 400 final, and then they can't put together in a 4x4. Um, I think there was, there's something about the close turnaround. Like North Carolina A&T, they probably had a 4x4 that could have won, but they ended up finishing ninth. And the big reason for that is one of their guys was in the 200 prior and then had to come back and run a 4x4. Four four. Um, Randolph Frost literally ran 44.6. And after that race, he was sitting in a Normatec boot with his legs elevated for like an hour. So like his body's kind of like beaten down and is not going to be able to come back and run another 44 second. He only ran like 45 or 46 seconds and just wasn't a typical Randolph Frost performance. But in general, the people who ran multiple events struggled in that 4x4. Four four. And I just thought that was interesting. I mean, look at this video of, of uh, Ross after that race. He was, he was dead. He was a dead man walking. Um, he put it all out there. Um, he's going to be fine outdoors. I'm excited for outdoors for a lot of these sprinters because the schedule is going to be a little more spread out. It's not going to be as congested. And we'll be able to see the true performance of the top guys like Ross and bowling and Michael Williams. We'll say this. Uh, fastest split of the 4x4 was Arkansas's James Benson, who split 44.65. 44.65.03 off of what Randolph Ross ran in the open. James Benson, keep an eye on him from Arkansas. He's my sleeper 400-meter runner going into the outdoor season. Um, got a question from the chat. Uh, what happened to champion Allison? ESPN3 doesn't show that race. Sorry, the ESPN didn't show it. Uh, he, I think he got um, stepped on by his teammate because there was three Florida guys in the 400 final in the same race because they do a two, two heat final. He got stepped on by one of his teammates, went down, um, and wasn't able to survive. I didn't talk to him to find out exactly what happened, but I think – the word on the street was he got stepped on by one of his teammates. All right, let's move over to.